And we are back for some more Genshin Impact. And we're on the case. We have to find out who sabotaged Lenny's magic show. So, I guess we can start over here at the ladder. Examine ladder. A ladder is required in order to return to the magic box above. All right, and then look at the uh, control board. This should be the control device for the trolley. It seems to be able to operate automatically. All right. So there was this grappling hook. Huh. What's this? It's a grappling hook. Looks like a hook tied to the end of a rope. Huh? There's all kinds of odds and ends here. Lenny didn't mention this earlier. Perhaps it was a prop for a different trick. I don't think so. But why would it have been left here? That's not why it was left Whatever here. Whatever it is, let's make a note of it first. Dropped hook rope. A rope has fallen to the ground. A metal hook has been tied to one end of this rope. Its use is unclear. Now, this is suspicious. Why is there a broken base here? The floor is wet. Please be careful not to slip. You got a sign for that? Speaking of which, why would there be water here? Maybe it was for a trick? Oh! Hi, my nose! It's one of those tricks where you pour water into a jug and then flip the jug over only for the water to disappear? I don't think that's what happened. And here's a broken vase! Huh. Did the trolley knock it down while moving? Why would it be in the way? That can't be. The trolley moves along tracks from start to finish. It couldn't have hit the vase at this distance. Hmm. There was a struggle. Let's note this down too and think about it later. Broken flower vase. There are many pieces of a broken flower vase on one side of the tunnel. All the water within has been spilled. Judging from the distance, it seems unlikely that it was knocked over by the trolley meant to transport the magic box. All right, what else do we need to examine? This dress and that shelf. Oh, these are the clothes that the lady chosen from the audience was wearing, right? So they stripped her naked. The clothes are here, but she's nowhere to be found. Lenny didn't mention the guests having a wardrobe change. Right. And do you really need to do that if you're kidnapping them? Only if you want to be an absolute creep. This is so confusing. Paima doesn't want to be a detective anymore. Take off the glasses and mustache. The young lady's clothes. The clothes belonging to Halsey, the lady who went missing, were found in the tunnel. The reason for this remains unknown. All right, now we know there's one more thing. Ooh, examine tracks. That's what it was. High precision is required to complete this magic show. The tracks are perfect for making the trolley stay on its des designated course. So there's got to be more stuff further down the line. Over here. Examine the storage boxes. It looks like storage boxes, a trolley, and there was something else. All kinds of props and costumes are haphazardly stuffed inside. What about all these clothes that are just chilling here? Wait, there's a book. We cannot read said book. The trolley and... Ooh, the air vents. The trolley is crucial for transporting the magic box to the other side. The culprit must have used this to execute their plan. And investigate. What is this place? Looks like a vent. It seems someone could fit through here. Seems like both of you could at one time. Although you'd probably be fighting each other. Huh. Could this have been the suspect's escape route? That's what I suspect. Alone, perhaps. But if they had to pull another person with them, the space would be too narrow. I doubt it. But there are no other ways in or out of here. Other than that, other than those that go through the magic boxes, 
And Linny and Lynette were in the two magic boxes. Oh, you're right. Let Paimon write that down. Tunnel vent. The tunnel vent looks like it could allow one person passage. Barely. But leaving along with the missing lady seems an unrealistic prospect. Return to the surface. Since we're just about done investigating down here. Yes. Let's head back up. Uh, I guess we can't do it on this end. I gotta say, looking at the Chief Justice in the banner for this update, uh, seems like he's evil. Not saying anything for certain, but he definitely seems like he's evil, and I wouldn't be surprised if he was actually the doctor. Wait, wait. Come on. Return to the surface. He's going up for a second there. Well, we've ascertained the state of the crime scene. Mm -hmm. Let's find a place to sort out our findings once Malus returns. Seems to me that there are several things that don't add up here. Yup. Apologies for the wait, demoiselle. So, what did the guards say? Did the criminal escape through the vent? They believe the odds of that are very low, since the vent leads to the opera house's basement. Shouldn't we the check there? have checked the area carefully. No one left through the basement during the performance or after the incident, and no one was found hiding there. So the tunnels become like a secret chamber then. You know, like the kind you usually see in novels. So it seems so. But here's the thing. It would make sense if it was the Chief Justice and he had guards on his side. So in that case, there is a bunch of inside people working together to make sure this happens. This is an inside job. Hmm. The plot thickens. Halsey's disappearance and Cowell's death are both quite inexplicable. Huh. No wonder Farina was so confident in her accusation. All the current evidence points toward Linny and Lynette. In other words, the charges are very likely to be upheld unless we make some considerable progress. Well, we'll make that progress. Charges and then trial. So if the charges are upheld, they'll announce a sentence? That's right. This is how a trial goes in the Opera House. During the proceedings, the Chief Justice and the Oratrice will hear statements from both sides. Oratrice will too? That's right. This is how indemnidium is produced. The statements from both sides, the defenses from attorneys, witness testimonies, and even the audience's emotions will all be projected on the oratrice. To put it simply, it's as if the oratrice has its own will and is a judge in its own right. This also precludes any kind of favoritism on the part of the chief justice. And not that this has ever happened anyway. Fascinating. I don't believe you, but fascinating. Once both sides have finished speaking, the Chief Justice will make his final decision. This, too, will be used by the Oratrice as a reference. Then, That's finally, so easy to game the, the system, Oratrice then. The Oratrice will be consulted by officials. The result it returns is the will of justice itself. Huh? So that machine is the one that actually decides? I'm on button of a leg called the shots. In practice, there is very little difference. Both have always come to the same judgment. Which is why people have great faith in the Chief Justice. Or he hacked it. Ah, yes. The guards also asked me to convey that none of us will be allowed to leave this place before the trial. Understandable. <laughs> why? Because we've chosen to act as the twins' proxies. That makes us persons related to the case. Understandable. <sighs> They're concerned that we might be colluding with outside parties. Oh, the inside parties are the ones that are colluding. Find outside help to disrupt the case. And even if that were not so, it could prove problematic if we happen to spread key information about the case ahead of time. That makes sense. I'm ready to break out at any time. Why? Whoa, whoa! There's no need for that. Paimon thinks they have a point. That said, are they providing food? Of course, she's concerned about that. Of course. I just hope you don't mind the lack of options. I'm afraid that catering to all tastes is not in the cards, nor is any guarantee of balanced nutrition. 
Now is not the time to be picky, but if they're not going to have good taste, they're not going to have a balance of nutrition either. Seems like you should go with one or the other. At least. If not one or the other, both. You need both. In that case, let's just sort out our findings together here. Pity. I was hoping to take you to try some of Fontaine's famous desserts, too. Don't say that in front of Paimon. I mean, what better way to properly think through our findings than over some tea and sweets? Don't say that in front of Paimon. Huh. Breaking out suddenly doesn't seem like such a bad idea after all. Paimon. Just kidding. Just kidding. Paimon will still do her best, even if there are no snacks. Are you sure? Hmm? What do you mean, no snacks? Of course we'll have snacks. If we cannot buy some, then we'll simply make some. You got DoorDash? Huh? Here? But how? Understood, demoiselle. Everyone, please come with me. I mean, even Monsta has that food could be delivered. We can't get food delivered from a nice shop. I mean, we're not on trial. We're just the proxies. They could still feed hey, us. You're carrying a portable stove with you? Seems dangerous. Also, yes, how do you all get around? Must be prepared to meet the demoiselle's baking needs whenever the fancy strikes her. How dare a fancy strike her? I have eggs, sugar, and almonds at the ready. <laughs> Good work, you two. Then I'll get to it. Was oh, she making Please pralines or something? For a moment. You'll no. get to taste my awesome snacks soon Almonds enough. aren't used for pralines. These three are quite the interesting group. Must be Spina di Ralusa thing. Avita methodically handles the ingredients and pulls fresh macaroons out. Oh, oh that's how you make macaroons. It smelled good while it was still in the oven. Oh, it's even better now. Paimon can't stop drooling. From the way you had these two guys carrying all that stuff around, Paimon thought you'd have them do more during the baking process. Well, they did enough carrying it around. How much do you want you them to do, Paimon? The entire thing by yourself. Beating the egg whites, grinding almonds. I was applauding. And I was giving encouraging smiles. Uh, that's not quite what Paimon meant, but okay. Uh, Paimon was just thinking. Aren't you worried about getting your fancy dress dirty, beating egg whites, and baking like this? <laughs> well, I don't think it's carved in stone anywhere that fancy ladies can only read books, sip tea, ride horses, and play the piano. True. I just really enjoy making snacks. Don't underestimate beating egg weights, by the way. It's a real arm workout. You also need to beat them to just the right consistency, or your macarons will crack. Anyway, give these a try. Fresh out of the oven. There's three for each of us. Paimon will take three? six. Yeah, Paimon's disappointed. Well, eating too many sweet treats might send all that sugar to your head. <laughs> you wouldn't be able to think clearly about the case on a sugar rush, would you? She lives on a sugar she rush. She is ready to be served as well. This is Demoiselle's favorite. Strong black tea with a floral fragrance that clears the mind and lifts the spirit. Thank you. Why don't you take a break as well? No need for concern. I'm merely doing as I should. Hi. Suit yourself. Are we going to get the recipe for the macaroons? All right, then. <clears throat> Down to business. As Paimon mentioned previously, the tunnel seems to be something of a secret chamber. Yes. However, we can assume that Linny and Lynette were not alone within it. Some criminal also occupied its sealed confines. Yes. The magician twins could have committed the crimes, of course, but they lack any logical motive. Yes. Exactly. Why would they do such a thing right when everyone was watching? So apart from the twins, we're left with two other people, the missing girl and the deceased. What do you mean, two other people? Oh, the, flower vase and the, the two other people are the missing girl and the deceased. Could indicate some altercation between Halsey and the criminal in the tunnel. Resulting in the shattering of the vase, the discarding of her clothes, and her abduction. Were the clothes discarded because they were wet and they would leave a trail? The criminal thought that since she was chosen from the crowd, she would be too easy to identify if she was still wearing the same clothes. That's also Paimon possible. I think that makes sense, but the real trouble is... There's no evidence that this third person even exists. <sighs> True. None of the clues we found thus far support the existence of this third person. But the only people left to consider are both technically victims. Whether it's the missing girl... Halsey, or poor Cowell. 
Huh. Could Halsey have secretly made modifications to the magic props in order to murder Cowl before making her escape? But she had no way of knowing how the magic trick worked. Uh, that's right. And even if she had tampered with the setup, she would need to understand the entire trick to pull it off. Nor does she have any motive. The guard said that she has never had any dealings with the magic troops' members. <sighs> Were we not thorough enough in our search? Is Cowell really dead? That's another question From I have. the sound of things, this is turning into an impossible case. Your macarons are amazing, though, Navia. They smell great! They're nice and crisp and super sweet! <laughs> they are my specialty, after all. And I see you've already had five of them. I thought it was three per person. <laughs> what? Five? Oh, that can't be right. Why am I only counting three? Honest! What if we're miscounting us something to do with the case? Don't worry about it. At my age, a few less sweets might actually be a good thing. Oh, there is three for each of them, too. No, no. Being greedy is one thing, but Paimon knows how to count. Besides, Paimon knows that if she ate too many, then others wouldn't have enough. It's fine. If, if you ate them, you ate them. Oh, it's fine. Everyone knows how much you love eating. Wait. Even you don't believe Paimon? Oh, how could you? If Paimon ate those two extra macarons, then may they turn into stone in her stomach! <laughs> All right, we get it. Well, I suppose one of us might have gotten too engrossed in our chat and eaten them by mistake. No big deal. Is there a possibility that someone's able to turn invisible or is able to change the perception of other people in order to hide? I think it's possible. I think that's very possible in this world. So I don't think I don't think Paimon's lying. I think she only had three. But someone somehow snuck up and stole two. Because she doesn't seem like she... I suppose one of us might have gotten too engrossed. She didn't see Paimon eat five. She didn't count Paimon eating five. She just assumes it was Paimon because Paimon is the one that seems most intrigued about eating them. There is someone else here doing something. Belus, set up the stove again, if you would. Huh? What are you doing? Does she know? Making sure everyone gets three macarons, of course. Oh, there's really no need to do that. Although I feel like she's on to something. Exactly. We don't want to trouble you. As you wish, demoiselle. And I, I think this is important. Sugar and almonds. At the ready. Uh, well, this really is your hobby, huh? No, I think she's on to something. Naiva. That's the second one. However, the discussion does not yield much progress. Well, I didn't. That's it for snack time. I'm going to have another say look name right, around but the area. I was just trying to get through it all quickly, and I could still fail. But we've still got some time. As attorneys, I suggest the two of you think the case over again. It would be awkward if you got all tongue-tied on stage during the trial. It's okay. Aether doesn't really talk. nothing. A small task for the Spina di Rosula. Silver, Malus, it's time to go. I'll be back if I find anything new. Probability of a third person being involved. Neither Cowell or Halsey had a motive. But after having talked to Navita, the likelihood of a third person being involved seems very low too. But here's the thing. There's a lot of benefit that they got out of taking the macarons if they really did. I mean, think about it. They had a snack. Nobody was any the wiser that the snack was eaten by somebody else. And she stopped to make more, which led to not much progress in the discussion. It was a win all around if there is another person that's somehow hiding themselves in plain sight in front of them. I said it in plain sight in front of them because typically when you think in plain sight, you just mean that they're there visibly just hiding somewhere where people don't really notice them. When I say in front of them, I mean they're really in front of them and you just can't see them. That's why I'm trying to conclude by saying it like that. There is a lot more going on. We've got to put our heads together. We've got to get our defense ready for the trial. 
How do we do that? Oh, it's probably gonna be a long and difficult case. <laughs> There's no point in worrying about that now. We just need to prepare. Here, take Pylon's notes. They should help you review the situation. Um... I don't think there's anything I can really do with it right now. I don't think that we've gotten enough sufficient evidence. The evidence is really stacked up against the twins. However, I think it's an inside job. I don't trust the Chief Justice. In real life, too! It's too much stuff going on with Clarence Thomas, and our Chief Justice is just being like, eh... We shouldn't do anything about it. It's like, those are bribes. I don't care what side of the political aisle you're on. If you don't report it, when you're supposed to report it, you know you did something wrong and something should be done about it. Let's get off of politics. Participate in the trial. Where we go? go? Hey, there's a viewpoint here that we didn't get? How do we not get it? Oh, maybe it's because we didn't go to the top. Let's get this trial started. Whoa, we're not even close. What do we do? The whole situation is so confusing. I do have some thoughts, but let's take this take things step by step. Good plan. Impossible things don't just happen. We'll get to the truth one way or another. Uh, just relax. Even if everyone else suspects Lenny and Lynette, at least we will be supporting them from the stands. And if we had to fight for them, we could probably win. I doubt Farina understands any more about what happened than we do. Oh, she doesn't understand <laughs> anything about what happened. She just called it out because Thanks, she's eccentric. Nadia. Well, we'll be going then. Best of luck to you. Glacius. Ah, oh, here we go. Ah, uh, here we go. Ah, oh, finally, you're back. Well, how did your investigation go? Poor. To be honest, you might be disappointed. It went very poorly. No, no. We're already very grateful that you were willing to help. Well, now, don't you all look disappointed. Don't tell me that your investigation came up. Empty-handed? It was an inside job. That was to be expected, of course. The guilty can never produce proof of their innocence. There's also cases where the innocent can't prove the case you. that they're innocent. I shall be terribly disappointed should you, my most anticipated foe, concede so easily. Just you wait. I'll take you down. Since both parties are present, I declare that the trial regarding the magic show incident is now in session. Firstly, in order for the audience to understand the causes and results of the incident, could we please have Mr. Linney explain the trick? Yes, of course. I will explain while Lynette demonstrates on stage. All the necessary items have been prepared. Lenny clearly reveals the details of the match trick. Everyone in the audience is stunned. Thank you, Mr. Linney. In that case, I take your statement to be that you ran to and remained hidden within the magic box in the audience stands once the trick began, and thus could not have committed the crime. Is this correct? Yes, that's correct, Your Honor. In that case, I call upon the prosecution. Lady Farina, do you wish to refute his statement in any way? She does, but she doesn't Why, have a real way to. Of course I do. Allow me to take the first shot and break this case wide open. Mr. Lenny is clearly lying. Houseway. There is no way you could have been in the box the whole time if you were to abduct Halsey and murder Cowell. In fact, I'd say you were hardly in that tunnel at all. That is simply your hypothesis based on the presumption that I'm guilty. Correct. Oh, is that so? And if I may ask, what did you hear while you were inside your box? The roaring countdown of the crowd, of course. That's how I kept track of the time and built anticipation for the finale. And you didn't hear anything else at all? Nothing that might leave an impression of any kind? No, nothing. I see. But when the count reached 30 seconds or so, there was a thud. 
One so loud that I believe practically everyone heard it. Huh? Hey, hang on. Something's not right here. How can Lenny not know about that sound? He even addressed it. Yeah, I'm sure he could have heard a noise that loud from inside the box. I was right by the box and I definitely heard the thud. I don't like this Look machine. Those scales. Could those mean... They probably represent the orchestrator's stance on the trial. <laughs> well then, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to use the words of the magician himself. You never know what can happen in the blink of an eye. Indeed, it seems his alibi can also collapse in the blink of an eye. Are you going to add something or no? <laughs> of course. I have armed myself to do far more than smash your alibi. Confidence cannot go unfounded, and my foundations are rock solid. I thought the place Tell was going to be flooded. Aren't you and Lynette actually from the House of the Heart? What? The House of the Heart? They're Patui? No wonder they did something like this. Calm down. So the serial disappearances were the Fatui's doing. Now it all makes sense. I don't disagree with that part. I've got a feeling that what happened on stage probably wasn't just an accident. That's irrelevant. Our identities have nothing to do with what happened. Mm-hmm. Indeed. Agreed. Then perhaps you could tell us everything that happened during that one minute. Your first priority is to prove yourself innocent after all. I'm sure there is little that needs to be kept secret now. Unless your script already has holes in it. <sighs> the Outlander is speechless. My oh my, don't they look flabbergasted. <laughs> now comes the infighting in Discord, I suppose. This was almost too easy. She really does not understand oh, the Outlander at all. Good thing I made all those preparations. Seems the all-nighter I pulled last night is really paying off. What type of preparations do you make? Hey, Lenny. Why didn't you tell us this before? Come on, take off those glasses. Lenny and Lynette are Fatui. Order, order. Mr. Lenny, allow me to reestablish the facts. Lady Farina has raised two points. First, when the thud was heard in the opera house, you were neither in the box nor the tunnel. Second, you and Ms. Lynette are both members of the House of the Hearth. Are these claims true? <sighs> There's no doubt about the magician's ability to con others. Given how Linny has concealed his identity, this could have all been set up beforehand. Plus, Child is here in Fontaine, along with the other house operatives. There must be some schemes at work here. I've been a victim of such schemes before, and now... Please answer my question, Mr. Linney. I'm sorry. Yes, they're true, Your Honor. Calm down! I knew it! Well, that's it. We might as well move on to the sentencing already. Oh, shut up. What should we do now? Permission to speak, Your Honor. Granted. My client has withheld some key information. My defense cannot process, uh, proceed. In that case, what is your request? I request a brief adjournment. There are things that must be discussed. Is that really necessary? Yes. They're already as good as guilty. No. The defendant deceived their own attorneys. What is there left to discuss? Some order, people just don't want order, to talk about where I they're say. from. Your request is reasonable, and we shall adjourn. This trial will reconvene in one hour. <laughs> so you would stick to Mr. Lenny's defense even after knowing what you do now? You certainly have more professionalism than I thought. In that case, my dear audience, let's allow the joy of victory to steep for a little while longer. <laughs> If the audience was the jury, I feel like she's been an unfair influence on them. That's kind of beside the point. While court is adjourned, you meet with Lenny and Lynette backstage in the opera house.
Now right, you gotta get speaking now. Come on, out with it all. Well, this is awkward. I didn't think the Hydro Archon would dig all that up. Of course she would. Traveler and Paimon. Yeah, sorry. Ugh. Paimon just knew where to start. We trusted you two. We based our entire reasoning on the assumption that you weren't bad guys. Not to set the wrong tone or anything, but Paimon's really mad. I'm very sorry. I know you're angry, and reasonably so, but please, let me explain. I know you've clashed with the Vatui several times before. I wouldn't be surprised if just hearing the word is enough to make you upset. But our organization is very, very large, and the Harbingers have very different personalities and goals. Right that's, now, we want to save true. people, as many as we can. That's right. I'm sure we're on the same page when it comes to this nation and the disaster that its people might face. I knew if it weren't for our respective identities, we could become good friends. That's why I didn't wish to flat out lie to you, but chose to hide some details instead. That's still considered the lying. The truth is very important, but being completely transparent about everything would see us spending more effort than we need to. But how can we know this isn't all just another lie? Right. So you be the judge. Heck, if I were you, I fear that I'd even struggle to trust me at this point. You met a Fatus who works as a magician, a trickster by trade. All by coincidence, too. But still, I'm asking you to trust me. I am no criminal. At least, not in this case. Sorry. Please forgive us. Well, you both say that, but... Explain the other issue first. Where did you actually go while the trick was being performed? Right. Let's hear your answer first, and no lies now! Of course. I'll answer any question you ask. We've been trying to find out how the Oratrice operates. We want to know why it has a consciousness, why can it deliver sentences accurately? During our investigations, we learned that the machine's core is beneath it. From that moment on, Lynette and I have been designing this box swap trick with the objective of getting close to the core. Is that why you needed a whole minute? That's right. In truth, the audience would take about 75 seconds to count down from Wait, 60. The city of Fontaine here? Basically the, the city of Psychopaths? So, after jumping into the tunnel, I accessed the Opera House basement via the vent, and went to investigate the room in which the core is stored. That air vent was created during the construction of the tunnel specifically to execute this step. And what did you find? Well, nothing. As soon as I reached that room and was about to investigate, I heard someone's voice. What'd they say? Which should have been impossible, of course. I was quite certain that I was the only one in the room. That voice seemed to recognize me and tried to speak to me. I chose to err on the side of caution and retreated the way I came. On the way back, I saw the broken vase and the clothes on the ground, but the countdown was almost finished, so there wasn't time to give it any thought. After that, the homicide occurred just as you saw. Well, that explains why you didn't hear the thud. So why do you want to understand how the Oratrice operates? Because of that prophecy I told you about, of course. We must know all we can about this nation's secrets in order to deal with that prophesized crisis. That's the only way we can save everyone. So, there you have it. The whole truth. I swear, I didn't hide anything from you this time. It was never my wish to proceed under this cloud of mistrust either. But, like I said earlier, you can be the judge. If you want to leave because you don't trust the Fatui, there's nothing I can do to stop you. Well, Traveler, you decide. Paimon will follow your lead however you choose. I believe in the facts. I will defend you from these charges. I believe that judgment will be dispensed as it should. 
Okay, thank you. I don't know if those Thanks are supposed to be together or apart. The current problem is that the scales are tipped pretty badly against you two. If we want to refute the Hydro Archon's accusations, we're gonna need a seriously watertight defense. It's airtight. Actually, we already have the key evidence we need. Huh? The German's almost over. Let's go back. Mm. Oh, Paimon thinks she gets what you mean. Lenny's statement. Lenny claims that he headed to the chamber containing the oratory score upon entering the tunnel and did not witness the crime taking place and thus did not hear the thud. The voice in the oratory's core chamber. Lenny claims to have heard a mysterious voice within the chamber that houses the oratory's core within the opera house's underground structure. Wait. Was the voice the oratrice itself and now the oratrice is actually going to be the witness and can no longer judge the case? That would be an interesting twist. Continue the trial. The brief adjournment ends and the nail biting trial reconvenes. Both parties have returned to their positions. Let us continue the trial. When last we left off, Mr. Linney acknowledged the new evidence presented by Lady Farina as fact. Therefore, Lady Farina may continue stating her reconstruction of the events. Ugh, that took long enough. Oh, shut up. Now then, if everyone would lend me their attention. Do we have to? At this stage, let's revisit that scene from Linney's perspective. Based on the opposition's account of events, you can identify loopholes in their statements. Use evidence and clues obtained during the investigation to refute any erroneous assertions of facts and replace them with the new inferences. Use your uh, refutations. Refute. Yeah, I think that's how you say it. To convince the audience and obtain more support from the people, the oratrice will display such shifts clearly. When you find and refute all incorrect content, you can complete the cycle of refutation and unveil the truth. Begin refusion time. As the countdown began, he entered the tunnel. Uh-huh. When the flatbed trolley passed, he opened the box and got into an altercation with Halsey, which caused the loud thud. No. He did not realize that this sound could be heard by everyone in the opera house, which is why he claimed earlier that he could not hear the sound. Finally, he used the vase to knock her out before making her change clothes to prevent others from recognizing her. At this time, Cowell arrived in the tunnel, having heard that strange noise, and caught Linny red-handed. So Linny proceeded to knock him out too before stuffing him into that box. How do you explain the switched out rope? To do it cleanly, you wouldn't want to crush the box on stage. Afterward, Linny passed the unconscious Halsey to his accomplice through the magic box in the audience stands before operating the devices such that Cal's death would be ruled an accident. Hmm. And there you have it. That's the truth behind what happened. No, it's not. Does the defendant's side have any objections to Lady Farina's description of the events? Yes. The key to refuting Lady Farina is the order of events, what Linny experienced, and what he saw. So let's see. Lenny entered the tunnel as the countdown began. Identify loopholes. Lenny claims to have headed to the chamber containing the Oratrice core upon entering the tunnel and did not witness the crime taking place, and thus did not hear the thud. No one left the opera house during the magic during the magic show, and after the incident happened, only those who had their identities cleared by the guards could leave. Let's see. Hmm. Seems this won't produce. No, wait. Lenny claims to have heard a mysterious voice within the chamber of that houses the Oratrice core. 
within the Opera House underground structure. Now let's try this one. Hmm. Seems I don't get these types of things in the game. The effective rebuttal. All right. So. Lenny entered the tunnel as the countdown began. No refuting that part. Lenny attacked Halsey. The loud sound was from Lenny and Halsey's fight. But Lenny claimed that he heard nothing in order to cover up the, cover the truth up. Claims that he headed to the chamber containing the ore trice in the core, entering the tunnel. There we go. According that fits. To Lenny, he left via the vent after entering the tunnel. He couldn't have had that altercation with Halsey. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lenny knocked Halsey out using the vase and removed her clothes to prevent her from being identified. However, was Lenny really in the tunnel at the time? Boom. Lenny went to the room that contains the Oratrice's core. This is the actual truth. Mm-hmm. Lenny knocked out Cowl. Knocked Cowl out. Cowl uh, walked in on Lenny, so the latter knocked him out with the vase, leading to the victim's death. The existing evidence indicates that when Lenny returned to the tunnel, the crime had already taken place, and all Lenny saw was the dress. The clothes belonged to Halsey. The lady who was, went missing were found in the tunnel. The reason for this remains unknown. Lenny must have been very confused when he saw them. Lenny did not take part in the underground altercation. He only witnessed traces of the aftermath. Detective Paimon has something to say! Go for it, Paimon! Oh, I gotta click for it. When the countdown started, Lenny did indeed go into the tunnel. Mm -hmm. But he immediately used a vent to access the Opera House basement, which is where the underground core of the Oratrice is stored. Once he reached that area, he heard a voice in what should have been an empty room. Since he felt something was amiss, he returned immediately! The crime scene had already developed by the time he reached the tunnel again. And in order to complete the magic trick, he did not remain there for any length of time. Finally, he reached the surface, and that was when the accident happened from his point of view. Therefore, he's innocent! Boom. Yeah, the first and the last things were actually, like, unrefutable. The other th three things were completely refutable. Successful refutation. I really don't know if I'm saying that word right. I don't think I've ever heard it used at all. Paimon, you're awesome. You believe that he knew nothing of the incident? Precisely. That's right! Moreover, I believe my opposition's reasoning is flawed. <laughs> my reasoning? The onstage equipment was clearly tampered with in a premeditated fashion. However, you say that Cowell bumped into Lenny by chance. If that's the case, then if Cowell hadn't entered the tunnel, who was the entire setup meant to kill? Dun dun dun! I said that earlier. They have a point. Duh! <laughs> that's right, you tell them! And that's why they're partners of mine. They've managed to turn things around. Oh, well, your denial is very strident. I'll give you that. But what proof do you have to back your claims? Do you happen to remember how you refuted Lenny's alibi initially? <laughs> of course I do. If he had been in the magic box the whole time, how could he have not heard that sound? Why do you ask? <laughs> You're saying that he wasn't? Your claim has now been, now become my weapon. Your claim has also become a critical clue. Information on the missing lady. Wait, how does this part work? Which is the evidence that Lenny wasn't in the tunnel when the time took place. 
Halsey is a missing person. She's a famous painter and came to watch the magic show in order to take a break from her own creative work. She isn't known to have been entangled in quarrels with any of the members of Lenny's magic troupe. Wait. Which the evidence that Lenny wasn't in the tunnel when the crime took place. Let's see. I inside magic box, irrelevant, irrelevant, irrelevant. Tunnel. Irrelevant, irrelevant, irrelevant. The deceased is one of Linny's assistants named Cal. Oh, that's irrelevant. So it comes down to these three. Which is the evidence that Linny wasn't in the tunnel when the crime took place? No one left the opera house during the magic show. And after the incident happened, only those who had their identities cleared by the guards would leave. There was a audible thub, thump that many audience members heard. That's right! Lenny wasn't in the box or in the tunnel. That's why he didn't hear anything strange during the performance. This means that when the crime happened, Lenny had already entered the basement via the vent. The same clue you used to disprove his alibi has now become the best proof! <laughs> the one problem with that is you're just taking his word for it, though. <laughs> well played. <sighs> to think you'd use such logic. Well then, if it wasn't Linny who committed the crimes, then who was it? Murderer was... Select the gear icons in the interface to check the corresponding case questions. Select the answers to fill all the empty gears to verify the correctness of your deduction. If you have made mistakes, you must make another selection from the remaining options. Once you have answered all the questions correctly, you can complete this logic chain. The Guards Investigation Report The Guards Investigation Report indicates that the fireworks released near the end of the show ignited and burned through the ropes suspending the water tank above the stage. This caused the water tank to fall and kill Cowell in the box below. If Linny is no longer under suspicion, only the other members of the troop would have been able to tamper with the props. Linny gave a detailed account of how the trick was supposed to work by using the box inside a box. The idea was for the box contained the audience member to be trapped across via the tunnel underneath, and Linny himself would also use this tunnel to get to the other side. Having changed her outfit, Lynette and her assistant would take charge of the onstage interactions. The clothes belonging to Halsey, the lady who went missing, were found in the tunnel. The reason for this remains unknown. Select the clues to sh select any clue to view detailed information. The deceased's name is Cowell, Linny's assistant. He would have been able to tamper with the equipment. Halsey is the missing person and an ordinary audience member. Or did she have her own scheme all along? Could there have been a third person involved? Is that really a possibility? Thinking about it, her killing him, knocking him out and stuffing him in the box, seems iffy. Him... Being the in the box, name is Cowell, Linny's assistant. He could have tampered he with it, but would have been able to tamper with the equipment. Mm. Could there have been a third? Per I'm wondering if there is a third person. Hypothesis incorrect. Halsey is the missing person, and an. Then that leaves Cowell. The deceased's name is Cowell. Linny's assistant. I don't get it. Unless he faked his death somehow. Huh? Uh, that can't be right. Are you serious? Uh, um, the killer was, in fact, Cowell, the deceased! Oh, is that so? How interesting! Let's hear your reasoning, then. What I must do next is recreate the truth. What Cowell did, 
and how he went from would-be perpetrator to victim. Let's see, how can we envisage Lenny as having been unable to interfere with crime? No one entered or left the opera house through its entrances. So where would the criminal have wanted to take Halsey? Lenny was not in the tunnel at that moment, which gave our criminal ample time. Hmm. It would have been tough for both people to fit into that vent. They would likely have bumped into Linny as well. Hold on, we're gonna go entered or left the this one. How can I prove that there was an altercation in the tunnel? The sound we heard may have come from a clash between the missing halls. Hold on. No one entered or left the opera house through its entrances. Linny was not in the tunnel at that moment, which gave our criminal ample time. Okay, so the first one is he was not in the tunnel, so he was unable to interfere with the crime. So switch. I keep there's altercation. The sound the we heard may have come from a clash. Yeah. Who is the prime suspect currently? The deceased's name is Cowell. Cowell. Where did the missing Halsey go? No one entered or left the opera house through its entrances. So where would the criminal have wanted to take Halsey? It would have been tough for both people to fit into that vent. They would likely... Halsey's clothing was in the tunnel. So there must have been some fear that she would attract attention. No one entered or left the... Incorrect hypothesis. So everything was right except for the last part. Halsey's clothing was in the tunnel. Dress. No. Oh, come on. It would have been tough for both people to fit into that vent. Select blue. Then we didn't come to a conclusion. The criminal must have understood the methods behind Lenny's magic trick. Well, leaving aside how we died, Cal was had all the means to commit the crime at his disposal. The strange noise could have been the sound of Cow on a house he's struggling. Lenny was not in the tunnel not in the tunnel for one minute. This would have given time for Cow to bring Halsey out of the magic box and the audience stands. But according to the guard's testimony, no one entered or left the opera house, so even if he had taken her, there would have been no means of exiting. Exiting from the box would have been in full view of the audience, pretty much guaranteeing that they would have been discovered. What's wrong? Where in the world did Halsey go? <laughs> I see how it is. So this was all just a bluff. And here I thought you had something to show for it. But it seems you're still far from the truth. All right, where did Halsey go? That's the one thing we're trying to figure out is where did she go? You have to have an explanation for that too. At least a way that she was taken out of here, if not where she is. There is no explanation for why she is not present. Look, since we're at a dead end, why not consider a different track? Just like the trick as it transpired, the end result must have been utterly different from the magician's initial design. If only we knew how Halsey disappeared. Well, that would be nice, but the tunnel only has three exits, and none of them seem very likely. Unless there's a hidden fourth. It's not like this is a magic trick where you can just make a real live person disappear. You know, like you did from that water tank, Lynette. Magic. Escaping from the water tank. Wait, could it have been the water? <laughs> Excuse my interruption, dear opponents. But do you not see that the crowd is growing impatient? There is no greater sin in this opera house than an awkward delay in the performance. Oh, shut up. You ain't got this in the bag. If Good. the defense is unable to make further effective arguments, we will move on to the next stage of the trial. Hold on a second. Linny was not in the tunnel at that moment, which gave our criminal ample time. Mm -hmm. The sound we heard may have come from a clash between the missing Halsey and the criminal. The deceased's name is Cowell, Linny's assistant. He would have been able to tamper with the equipment. The vase was not broken by chance. It was used to cover important evidence. The water! 
Just like the clue. Hypothesis correct. Lynette escaped from the water tank, vanishing gradually and leaving only clothes behind. Mm hmm If there's a similar method where a person could be transformed into water... <laughs> oh, just a moment, please. I do hope you know how preposterous you sound at the moment. Oh, really, oh, Hydro a Archon? ever be transformed into water? reality we're talking about here not some magic trick I request that we examine Cowell's personal effects we might find something there <sighs> must we really I should think that of anyone your friend Linny already knows this truth very well magic tricks are ultimately just illusions and misdirection but Halsey's disappearance is very real we're talking about two completely different things. Are we really now? Even so, I trust the traveler's judgment. The truth must be out there somewhere. Perhaps a new line of reasoning may open if we try to gather all the focal points that don't make sense. Since Cal was the deceased, we haven't placed much attention on him. Mm -hmm. But given that we aren't making much progress with the case, it wouldn't hurt to have a look at his belongings, would it? People really do come up with all sorts of harebrained schemes when at the end of their rope. The way I see it, your suggestion that we broaden the scope of our investigation is nothing but a tactic for stalling the trial. Nevertheless, I believe that this is a reasonable request on the part of an attorney. Since the trial does indeed appear to be at an impasse, I believe that additional evidence may help us make more progress. Guards, Please step into the lounge and examine the personal effects of the deceased Cowell. After some time, a guard returns with the news. We are still examining the items, but we have already made critical progress that we feel must be shared with everyone post haste. How come they didn't examine anything about the body several first? Test tubes of fluid within Cowell's baggage, each labeled separately. The notebook Ooh. in his backpack claims that these fluids are. Water from the Primordial Sea. The Primordial Sea. What's that mean? The note's contents also indicate that Cowell belonged to an organization that sells illegal drugs and that he had an accomplice. The notebook has many entries concerning safe usage of these fluids, in which the keyword dissolve appears many times. One of these tubes was labeled Opera Epicles, along with yesterday's date. It is empty. The notes also state that these dissolution properties work exclusively on people from Fontaine. It's likely that Halsey was chosen as some sort of test subject. Oh, so she's dead. As such, we believe that the defense's hypothesis is, in fact, supported by sufficient evidence. So that's what it means by You've people dissolving into the sea. People dissolving into water? Could something so ridiculous actually be true? Wait a moment. This reminds me of a certain prophecy, but... It's just a coincidence, isn't it? I don't think so. If people can become water, does that mean that the water tank's real use was as a means to hide water stains? And if Cowell was targeting that girl... Wait just a minute. Could that mean... You two, with me, quick! Demoiselle, wait! What about your partners? Mm, let's go. Just trust me. Order! Order! It is undeniable that further examination of the deceased's personal effects has yielded some surprising results, but we cannot yet verify the veracity of these clues. Still, let us assume that these clues are indeed authentic, albeit with the understanding that Ms. Halsey has yet to be found. Guards, please continue examining the items along these lines. Mr. Linney, it appears your hypothesis is supported by the evidence, so please continue speaking. Of course. Thank you, Your Honor. If we uphold this hypothesis, I believe that many of this case's seemingly unrelated clues can be connected together. Right! Like the metal hook! That one didn't make sense at all! Hmm. Let's think about 
about this. Cowl's methods must have something to do with that water from the primordial sea. Water from the primordial sea. The liquid the guards found on Cowl's luggage seemed to have the ability to dissolve Fontanians into water. Let's see. Who is the prime suspect currently? Cowl. name is Cowl. We don't need to go over that again. What item did the culprit use to control the timing of the dissolution? Control the timing. Lynette was in the magic box on stage the entire time. Did she have something to do with this? I remember there was something else within the inner layer of that box. The water from the primordial sea should already have been prepped before Halsey entered the magic box. Now it seems like the hook rope was not meant for another magic trick, but was instead some form of triggering mechanism. What did the culprit use to control the timing of the dissolution? What item did the culprit use to dissolve Halsey? The water from the primordial sea should. Yeah, obviously. What item did the culprit use to hide the mechanism behind the crime? The rope that held the water tank up was lit by the fireworks and snapped. Hypothesis is incorrect because of the ropes. Lynette was in the magic box on stage the entire time. Did she have some? That's not an item. I remember item. there was something else within the. Boom. All right, what's gonna happen now? Mm -hmm. When the magic box containing Halsey was lowered, the metal hook would retract gradually and pierce the balloon at the top of the box. When the balloon attached to the box popped, the water from the primordial seed inside it would pour down and dissolve Halsey. Afterward, Cowl would enter the tunnel and break the flower vase to conceal the water inside the tunnel, with the remaining evidence being covered up by the water tank on stage. But he encountered something unexpected in the tunnel and wound up being fatally hit by the same water tank he meant to use to cover his tracks. Huh, that does make sense. That actually links together a lot of the more confusing pieces of evidence. Boom. Level. <sighs> oh dear, what do I do? Even I think they sound convincing now. Have I falsely accused an innocent person? Yep. <sighs> what a humiliation. Now, That's what you're worried about? It seems like the only point of contention remaining is the exact circumstances that led to Cal's death. His notes mentioned he had an accomplice who could be related to the situation. On that note, the guards have just contacted me indicating that they uncovered new evidence. Which is... I shall now invite him on stage to share it with us. Thank you, Your Honor. We were just inspecting the luggage of the other people involved in this case. And we found an identical sample of the water from the Primordial Sea among Linny's personal effects. Planted. What? That can't be. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, how wonderfully comedic to have your own counterattack only to come back and wound you. <laughs> Does this not clear all doubt? My dear citizens, my loyal audience, Allow me to present my reasoning and bring this performance to a swift close. Begin refutation time. Linny did not need to take part in the dissolution of the young woman at all. Indeed, he did leave the scene via the vent. Okay. Having made modifications to the props beforehand, his accomplice Cowl then caused Halsey to vanish using the water from the primordial sea. That 
wait upon his return. And cruel avarice, Linny desired sole credit and prepared to do away with his partner in crime. Why would he want credit? Ultimately, he knocked Cowell out, and the tool meant to cover the crime up also became a murder weapon. Now, as much as I regret having come to such a viciously straightforward conclusion, it does seem that the famed Fatui is quite the cold-blooded and ruthless organization. They can't screw that part. Am I right, no. Mr. Linny? We've used up all the evidence we collected. There's no way for us to make a rebuttal here. Is this the end of the road? Got it. Oh no! Mm, Paimon can't think of anything either! It doesn't look like there's any way around this! Uh, seems using the water as new evidence was too good a move! Oh, why did this have to happen now? Hmm. I think we've all seen enough now. And we have ample witnesses to my flawless reasoning. No, you don't. I believe this is indeed the finale. Now then, my good, noble Chief Justice, should we not, in your view, move? Huh? Excuse me, everyone, but I must interject. Do it. This I must ask you not to shout and to respect. The ongoing legal proceedings. She's a part of the legal oh, proceedings. Come on. Don't be hasty. I have a good reason for interrupting, you know. Now, would anyone here like to take a little break from all this debate and see a little magic? I'll show you an amazing trick. One that can bring a young woman who has disappeared back in the flesh right before your very eyes. Please, do the honors, Mr. Linny, if you would be so kind. But what in the world is she saying? No offense, miss, but miracles like that are beyond my scope as a magician. Come on now, don't be silly. Magic is all about misdirection, isn't it? It often conceals the truth while presenting a fascinating illusion. But once everyone believes the illusion, can't magic reveal the truth to them once again? And wouldn't such a trick be the most marvelous finale to today's performance? Come on, Lenny and Lynette. Give it another go. Don't worry. Spina di Rasula has made the necessary arrangements on your behalf. But as the magic makers and stars of the show, I think I should leave the final performance to you. I understand. Voila. Well, I feel like the truth is they actually found her. Um, uh, they don't seem happy about the that. Interruption. Wait, isn't that Halsey? So the whole thing about people dissolving wasn't true after all? To be clear, I'm only here because this person told me that if I testified, the merit of doing so would lessen my sentence. I was hiding outside this room listening to the proceedings because I was afraid that I would be the one put on trial. I was just feeling happy that no one had noticed me, and then before I knew it, she caught me. Why were you happy? <laughs> That'll teach you to underestimate us three. Where should I begin? <sighs> I'm sorry. I'm the one who killed Cowell. I admit it. But, what? Why? Firstly, my name isn't Halsey. It's Lillian, and I'm originally from Mondstadt. <gasps> I heard that Linny's show was going to be a real thriller, but I missed the chance to buy a ticket, so I stole one. That's how I make a living. I steal stuff here and there, and I'd never been caught before. But I was noticed at the harbor a few days ago, and I barely got away. Lenny was the one who caught me in the act. Hey! No wonder you look familiar! So you were the thief! Ah! Lenny even mentioned that you were pretty skilled! Well, and I thought that would have been the end of it, but then the number selector chose me. 
But she does successfully steal she the ticket. mentioned the Fortress of Meripede. That's a prison, isn't it? So you can imagine how shocked I was. I thought he was on to me for sure. So I played along with the show while looking for an opening to flee. But then I got water poured on me for no reason, and then someone jumped into the tunnel to nab me. I wasn't going to take that lying down, so I knocked him out and stuffed him into the box. There was nowhere to run from there, though, so I had to change my clothes and hide in a box containing performance costumes. The haphazardly stuffed ones. I after the first guard arrived at the scene and continued hiding inside the opera house. Can a person even hide in there? If they're practice, if they're a practice hand at concealment, probably. A professional thief could make it work. But I swear, I didn't know that the water tank would fall down. Really, I swear it. Had I known that, I wouldn't have put him in the magic box. I may be a thief, but I'm no killer. Well, that makes everything pretty clear now, doesn't it? Yeah, now it's time to refute the Hydra Archon's previous reasoning. This time, we need to tell the entire story from Lillian's perspective. Our move. All right, Lillian, uh, Lenny entered the tunnel. Lenny entered the tunnel before after the beginning of the countdown. Afterwards, he used the ventilation shaft to leave the tunnel and did not participate in the dissolving of the young woman. Come on, identify loopholes. The, this device was used during Lenny's magic performance to choose a lucky member of the audience. However, the guards have found they'll generate the exact same number no matter what. Clearly, someone has tampered with it. How's he dissolve? Cowl planned to use the prepared apparatus for the magic tricks to dissolve Halsey inside the magic box. As Halsey has appeared completely unharmed before all of our eyes, Fiorina's conjecture no longer holds water. And how would Halsey have reacted with when the water from the primordial sea suddenly began to trickle in? Let's see. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, so this is her previous assumptions. When he entered the tunnel after the counter began afterwards, he used a ventilation shaft to leave the tunnel and did not participate in the dissolving of the young woman. Audible thump. Hmm. No. Let's see. As Halsey has appeared to completely be unharmed before, however, and how would Halsey have reacted? Let's see. Hmm. I don't. I don't know how to get this right. Lenny wanted all the credit and glory and wanted to get rid of all of his partners. As Halsey has appeared completely unharmed before all of our eyes, Fiorina's conjecture no longer holds water, but there is evidence proving that a fight did indeed break out in the tunnel. Identify loop. Broken vase thump sound? Hmm. No. There we go. The flower vase was not broken to cover anything up, but it was smashed during the struggle between Lillianne and Cowell. Mm hmm. I feel like anything that has blue letters. Yeah, it's going to be a refutable thing. Lenny knocked Kala out, then using the method used to dissolve water, uh, used to dissolve young girls. He got rid of Kala in disguise as an accident. As Halsey has appeared completely unharmed before all of our eyes, what did Halsey do? She got rid of her dress. Lillianne was afraid that she would be recognized if she left, so she changed clothes and hid, biding her time. Just what one might expect of an experienced thief. And so the last thing here, how and how would Halsey have reacted? The drop hmm. hook? No. The thud? The strange sound wasn't from a fight. It was Lillianne's attempt to break out when she was frightened. Been selected out of the blue, Lillianne panicked. Her panic 
only intensified after she entered the tunnel and had water poured on her head. So she kicked the door open, producing the thud we all heard. Hearing the commotion, Cowl leapt into the tunnel, only to discover that Lillian had not dissolved. He did not know that Lillian was not from Fontaine, but was a thief who made her way in by stealing a ticket. Mistakenly believing that the water from the primordial sea needed time to take effect, he tried to force Lillian back into the box. The two broke the flower vase during the struggle, but Lillian came out on top, knocking Cowl out and putting him in the box. With no way of escaping, she changed her clothes and hid in the costume trunk until the performance ended. Boom. Successful refutation. through guard inspection if she tried to leave afterward. So, she has been trapped in the opera house these last two days. And has been starving. She had already become desperately hungry by the time we were chatting over macarons. So, she swiped two of them right under our noses. Called it. Talk about a sneaky thief. At this point, all the events that happened in the tunnel have now come to light. Ah, so that's the whole story. Bravo! Bravo! Now then, Lady Farina, do you wish to speak against the defense's statements? I... Uh, um... Please answer the question, Lady Farina. Also, if I may add, the trial has not yet ended. As such, I request that the prosecution not leave the room before the proceedings have concluded. Mm. What, are you reading my mind now? <sighs> no, I have no further arguments. I admit defeat. But really, could you at least have left me with some dignity? No. Wow, look at that. She's like a deflated balloon now. Mm -hmm. If there are no objections, then as the Chief Justice of Fontaine, I shall once again repeat the full sequence of events. The actual perpetrator of the serial disappearances, Cowell, selected his next victim from the audience reservation list. With some modifications to the selector, he could ensure that the pre-selected young woman would be chosen. To cover up any evidence while committing the deed, Cowell thought of allowing the water tank to fall, which would conceal the water left behind after the young woman was dissolved. He also tampered with the rope suspending the water tank, using the fireworks at the end of the performance to cause the tank to drop and hide the watermarks. He poured the water from the primordial sea into a balloon during the preparation of the magic box and stuck it to the box's lid. Finally, he passed the prepared hook on a rope through the gap in the magic box's door when bringing the young woman to said box. When the magic trick officially began, the box containing the woman was lowered into the tunnel, tightening the hook rope and bursting the balloon containing the water. If all had gone to plan, the young woman would be dissolved at this time. However, Lillianne was not from Fontaine and thus fled the box with a loud noise. Realizing that there was trouble, Cowell entered the tunnel and met Lillianne. Thinking that the waters had not yet taken effect, he decided to proceed. However, his opponent was more capable than he thought, and he was overcome, knocked unconscious, and placed into the magic box, and thus became his own final victim. Lillianne, according to her own statements, then changed clothes and hid until the performance ended, before hiding in other parts of the opera house. As for Linny, he was in the underground structures within the opera house, and was thus ignorant of these happenings. From this reconstruction of events, we can conclude that Linny, the accused, is in fact innocent. Um. Hooray, Linny and Lynette! Amazing! While there is much in Linny and Lillian's conduct that should still be investigated separately, True. this case, at least, can be handed over to the Oratrix to make the final decision.
As such, Linny and Lynette are officially declared not guilty. Let's go out for ice cream to celebrate. Work, partners. I don't know how you celebrate Thank a you all. Thank win. You so much. Like, really? I haven't been in legal trouble like that. Let's not celebrate just yet. You guys are still in Next, trouble. I think we deserve an explanation, Guard Vaughn. How did you find the water from the primordial sea in Linny's baggage? Ooh. Right. Your discovery caused me to make a serious mistake, you know. Or was that not a discovery, but false evidence that you dare to bring before this court? Mm. I suspect that the accomplice mentioned in Cowell's notes was not Linny, but you, yes? Ooh! I... Uh... I'm sure you know what you must do to lessen your sentence. Speak quickly! Unless you want to earn yourself a one-way ticket to Coupon Town. Coupon Town? I was just following orders. Of? We were supposed to place blame for the serial disappearances onto Linny, and thus cause suspicion to fall on the Fatui. The higher-ups said this was the best opportunity to do so. And now that your plan has fallen through, and the secrets of the water have been revealed, you have become a liability to said higher-ups, yes? Therefore, you would be wise to tell everything you know, and seek the protection of the guards. Yes, I'll tell you everything I know. Our boss discovered that the water can cause people to dissolve. It can also be made into a potion, which when extremely diluted, can cause people to experience unforgettable exhilaration. We've been in this business for a while now, and have made decent mora off it. The disappearances were also the boss's idea. I mean, this is the boss we're talking about, the- Doctor. <laughs> He turned into water. And now he can no longer talk. Such ruthlessness. <sighs> I shouldn't have expected any less of them. An outrageous them act. She All knows present. who it is. Please submit to inspection immediately. So we're done with this case, kind of. However, nothing is found at the scene apart from the liquid left behind after Vaughn just is off. Okay, so the case is completely done now. Until we find out who the boss is. So, we're just going back now? The problem seems to have been solved for now. We're not he needed here anymore. That's true, but... Traveler, Paimon, please wait. That's... Lenny... I know you may not want to speak to me right now. Maybe you don't even want to look at me. But still, let me thank you again for defending me to the end, even after you learned that I'm a member of the Fatui. I just didn't wish to see anyone be falsely accused. I guess. But regardless, I'd like the opportunity to set things straight. I didn't approach you with any ulterior motives or ill intent. I've spoken to you as myself, just plain Linny, this entire time. As for why I'm a Fatus, it's because the goals of the House of the Hearth align with those of an orphan like me. That's all. That was how Father, who you might know as the Knave, approached recruiting us back then too. The Knave? The one who controls the House of the Hearth? She's your father? That's right. And since we're here, I was wondering, would you mind hearing a story? It's about my past. Back when our parents first died, Lynette and I were left wandering the streets. To survive, I took to surreptitiously observing an older street performer who did magic. It took me several days to figure out how he pulled off his amazing tricks. I took my sister through several streets until we found a crowded corner, and we began to perform magic tricks there. To my surprise, we proved to be pretty popular, and we could at least stop worrying about where our next meal would come from for a time. But I didn't want my sister to remain a street rat together with me forever. Before long, an aristocrat came to me and claimed that he wished to take us in after watching my performances. So you went from orphans to nobility just like that? 
That was how we felt at first, too. As if fate was on our side and we could say goodbye to those painful days. But I gradually discovered that while we were called foster children, he was really after my talent for magic tricks. He would constantly take me to all sorts of banquets to garner attention, which he would then use to expand his social circles. That doesn't seem too bad either. Better than roaming the streets at any rate. Mm. <laughs> it took a while for me to realize just how dark his heart really was. After one particular performance at a banquet, I discovered that Lynette was not on the same return vehicle as me. I waited a long time after we returned home, but she did not come back. I went to that noble's bedroom and asked him about her whereabouts. The answer he gave me was, she caught the eye of the most eminent person at the banquet, so I sent her over as a gift. I mean, you'll be able to perform your magic regardless of who your assistant is, yes? Oh no. So he was gonna... Prostitute her. But wouldn't Fontaine's laws deal with such people? As far as outsiders are concerned, this is a relationship akin to adoption or foster care, and they have their ways of escaping the eye of the law. So what happened after that? I managed to ferret out the location of the mansion of that so-called eminent person and hurried through the night. But by the time I leaped over the walls, avoided the guards, and made my way in, all I saw was the moonlit ground covered in blood and the knave standing there in the darkness. So... He'd already taken care of that guy. Good. That's right. She had rescued my sister before she could come to any harm, and had even discovered several girls hidden in a basement, all of them orphans. Father, I mean, the knave, might have seen something in me, and so she made me an offer. An offer that you can the refuse? House of the hearth welcomes you, for your interests align with ours. Here, none will ever betray you. Indeed, betrayal shall never be permitted here. What happened to your foster father? I was hesitant to trust her. I mean, I had just been betrayed by nobles. But she was also quick to destroy the noble who had taken us in at first. Good. Giving us back our freedom. Oh. How'd you so do that's though? how the two of you joined the House of the Hearth. That's all in the past, though. The name is after the Gnosis, isn't she? She has her own plans. She has gained permission from the Sarita to first use the Gnosis' power once she obtains it. She plans to use it to find a way to break the prophecy and save Fontaine. So, she believes in that prophecy, too? That's right. The whole House of the Hearth is currently working to combat that crisis. I'd be willing to work with the Fury for that. has also proven that people from Fontaine can indeed dissolve into some sort of water, thus further supporting the prophecy. All of us house members here, Lady Arlecchino herself included, are from Fontaine. We won't give up on defending our homeland. To us orphans, the only connection we have left to this world, apart from our family, is our homeland. So... From small deeds like distributing magic pockets to huge schemes like stealing a Gnosis, everything is aimed at dealing with that prophecy. I'm sorry. I still can't completely trust you. It's all right. I understand. The only thing I can do is relate all this to you. I just hope you can understand that even as a member of the house, I have never stopped making my own decisions and that I believe what I'm doing is right. If you should need anything at all in the future, feel free to find me. I will do my best to help you, as plain Linny. I understand. Goodbye. Um, bye, Linny! Twist of Great Magic. Lies cast shadows underneath gathered lights. Time to leave the opera house. But instead, we're going to end things off here. So that'll be it for this one. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, deuces. So I wrote it in the rhyme. The Reverend Doctor got an 8K wet working. Roaches get the rays sprayed. My weak rhyme, my body, your best verses on game day. I touch the crowns of self
for title kings You leave the heat like LeBron when I melt your idols, vital things This is Malcolm and Martin, Million Man March and Sparta Mixed with a legion of angels surrounding sons and daughters Simon Peter with a desert eagle